Hey everyone, Mauricio here. In this sneak peek video for episode 7, we'll be giving you a short overview of the changes this week at Starbase Texas, with an emphasis on future testing at Massey's, as well as preparation for steel plate installation under the orbital launch mount. These images were taken from the flyover conducted yesterday on Wednesday, July 5th, so stay tuned for additional angles, renders, and more in our full-length 20-minute video coming out on Sunday, as well as the Starbase Weekly Show on Saturday. Starting our tour Massey's at the tank farm, in the past weeks we've seen additional cryospheres and rectangular vaporizers being installed, with the most recent addition being the three horizontal liquid nitrogen tanks being lifted into place two weeks ago. This is all in order to increase capacity of the tank farm in preparation for additional booster and ship testing as SpaceX shifts some of the responsibility off the launch site. This week, as yet another sign of imminent booster or ship crowd testing, we see these two liquid oxygen tankers offloading liquid oxygen into the LOX tank seen here. This means we can expect to see either a booster, ship, or test article be transported over to Massey's for LOX related testing soon. In the meantime, SpaceX has been busy finishing construction of the booster cryogenic test pad, as well as continuing construction of the possible booster puck shucker, reconfiguring of the structural testing cage, and more. We'll cover this more in-depth analysis during our full-length flyover video, coming out this Sunday. Moving on to the Sanchez site, the most noticeable change we see this week is the smaller steel plate assembly currently under construction. This assembly is one of the four constructed at the Sanchez site, with these two being loaded onto the SPMTs as of Wednesday night, and the fourth already at the launch site. More on that later. Back to the smaller plate assembly, this is where we saw the section of pipe being cut off the steel plate manifold assembly. Now what's the reasoning behind this decision? Thanks to Ryan has in space, we theorize that one possibility is that it's being modified in order to fit with this Y pipe, under the orbital launch mount. In its current state, it might be too awkward to move and require cutting into two parts for easy installation in the future. Look forward to renders by the space engineer on Sunday's full-length update video to help visualize how this smaller steel plate assembly will look next to the Y pipe. Next up is the build site. Today's point of focus will be the Star Factory, where SpaceX is working to massively increase production capacity for the Super Heavy and Starship vehicles. We can see concrete being poured into the new rectangular trench we saw being dug in last week's flyover. It's possible that this will be the start of a solid dividing fire brick wall within the Star Factory Phase 2 expansion, something that's very much required in buildings of this size. Looking slightly downwards, we see that channels for various groups of conduit cables have been dug. These will be used to control certain machinery and equipment that is to be used in this part of the factory, once Star Factory's second phase of expansion is complete. And now we fly east to the much anticipated launch site. First, we peek under the OLAM, where the most noticeable change is that the final major concrete port has occurred. On Monday, July 3rd, an armada of 171 concrete trucks arrive at the launch site to create the pad that the steel plates will sit on. Although there are still a few areas with rebar that need to be poured with concrete, this most recent pour was what allowed the placement and installation of the centerpiece steel plate under the OLAM which we saw happen on the afternoon of Wednesday, July 5th. Speaking of the centerpiece steel plate, here it is being prepared on the morning of the 5th before its placement later in the day. It was raised vertically and placed on this rusty looking stand, brought under the OLM and laid flat ahead of insulation, which we can expect to happen over the next coming weeks. Right next to it, we see three other steel plate assemblies. They are due to be attached to the arms of the center steel plate that have no manifolds running to them, and we can see they are still being worked on by the orbital pad berm. And here's the American flag, waving proudly from the orbital launch tower. Happy belated Independence Day to my fellow Americans. And that's it for our brief overview of the changes at Starbase this week. If you'd like to see other angles and hear more in-depth analysis, Stay tuned for our Starbase Weekly live stream on Saturday and the 20 minute Starbase flyover update coming out on Sunday. Consider supporting us on Patreon to gain access to premium flyover pictures. This support also helps pay for the expenses associated with the flyover. The link is in the description down below. Thank you for watching and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed our content. 
and also subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on seeing more videos like this. That's all for now.